look at here. Um, very important thing we're looking at. Uh, you'll see it next year if you take me for AP2, but it is referred to as the right hand roll, the RHR. Um, and if you're sitting around in AP2 and you're watching this, you're like, oh man, the right hand roll, only thing I know in life. Um, but the right hand roll has to deal with trying to figure out directions based off of a cross product. So whenever we had a dot product, whenever we were talking about work, f dot x, we were looking at parallel components. We were looking at how much of a force vector is in the direction of uh, the uh, displacement vector for work. What we're looking at now in terms of rotation is we're trying to see how much of one vector is perpendicular to another. Because if I think of a door existing here, and I would like to open the door, I need to push on it in order to get a rotation out. If I simply pull on the door, like away from the hinge, then I'm not going to do anything. And if I pushed on the door as well, it's not rotating either. I need to push perpendicular. Or if I didn't push perpendicular, if I pushed at an angle, at least some of that force is perpendicular. And that's what we care about. So if we have some cross product here, something like A cross B, what we're really looking at is A, B times the sine of the angle between those vectors. That is how we can mathematically write out the cross product. If we want to find a direction of this resultant vector, because when we have a cross product, we multiply these two together, it doesn't just give us a number like it did with work, it gives us back another vector. And that means it has to have a direction. Now, when we do this, things are going to get a little weird. If we have some first vector A, and we cross it with a second vector B, notice how once again, just like with the dot product, we have placed both of our vectors so that they look like the face on a clock. Okay, We've got our kind of pivot point right there. What we're going to do here is we're going to take our fingertips, that's your four fingers, not your thumb. We're going to take our four fingertips and we're going to place them in the direction of A. Okay, so I can either kind of chicken wing it, kind of up at an angle like this, if I'm you know looking at the computer screen, or I could like rotate it around. So I could you know have my fingers like that. What we then need to do is we need to curl our fingers from A to B through the smallest angle possible. So for us, that's gonna be from A to B, just like that. If I kinda of chicken wing my arm or kinda of put my arm off to the side like this, I can see that when I curl my fingers down from A to B, my thumb is pointing into the screen. And if I had this on a piece of paper in front of me and did this, my thumb would be into that piece of paper, okay? Since we're our thumb is going into that object, that is the direction of the vector. The direction isn't left, right, up, down, or somewhere in between. It's actually in a third dimension. It's into the board or into the paper, into the screen. And we designate into with an X. We can think about that as if you're you know, shooting a bow and arrow like Robin Hood, um, and you draw back and let the arrow fly, the fletchings, the little arrows in the back, are the last thing you see as that arrow flies into the board or the page. So that's what we have there. If we had a different setup, if we had something like this, where this is A, and this is B, then what we'd have with A crossing B with the fingers in the direction of A, which is a little weird, my arm's getting a weird spot, and we curl to B, we find that our thumb points out of the screen, and if we had this on paper in front of us, we'd see it's coming out of the paper. When we're sending an object out of the page, we draw a dot, and that represents coming out. 
We can think of that as that the arrow is flying at you and the only thing you see is the point of it as it comes at you, okay? Now, what we can think about if, and this is kind of weird thinking about it in a three-dimensional case, but maybe we can you know, pull up a little uh, graph here. In a three-dimensional case, what we're considering is that our vectors, well, our resultant vector, what we're getting out or in or maybe in a different direction, is orthogonal to the other two vectors. So if I think about this, if I think about, you know, on a 3D axis, this is vector A and this is vector B. When I go A to B, my vector C, my resultant, is actually going up. And that means that it is 90 degrees from A and 90 degrees from B. Whenever you have that resultant vector being 90 degrees off from both other vectors, that is known as orthogonal, orthogonality. Um, you don't need to really worry about much more than that. That's kind of a higher end math term. Um, but that's what we have here. We have this new vector that's created 90 degrees from both of our original vectors, okay? So if we kind of look at some you know, more crazy examples of this, um, if we have vector A and vector B like this, well, the question now becomes, how do I rotate this? How do I go A to B? Do I go over or do I go under? Because in both ways, I've got 180 degrees. Well, if we think back to sine of theta, sine of 180 degrees is zero. So in this case here, there is not a resultant vector because that is 180 degrees, kind of a weird thing. If we had a scenario where we had vector A, let's say going to the right, and vector B was coming out of the board, or rather, excuse me, going into the board, then what we'll have to do is place our fingers in the direction of A and curl them into the board or the page or whatever, such that our thumb is now pointing up and that our resultant vector here is going up, which is a little strange, but that's orthogonal because that vector C is 90 degrees from A and it's 90 degrees from into the board. So kind of a weird thing that we're looking at here. You can think of it and you have to start thinking about it in a three dimensional case. So if you wanna throw up your physics gang sign, you can. This is X, Y, Z vectors, you know, for orthogonality. Um, but these directions actually aren't that bad uh, because you always have a 50-50 shot. If we look at this last one we did, this vector A is going left or right, okay? So it's in this X plane, it's going right, but that's the left or right direction. B is going in, which is in the in out direction. So you cannot have a vector go for our resultant, our C vector, it can't be left or right, and it can't be in or out. It has to be either up or down, 50-50 choice. If we look at the previous vectors we had, this B vector is going to the right. This A vector is also going to the right, but it's also going down. So I've got left and right covered from B. I've got up and down covered from A. That means my answer either has to be in or out. In this case, it was out. For the one above it, B is once again going to the right. A is going to the right and up. So I've got left, right covered from B. I've got up, down covered from A. This has to be either in or out. And in this case, it was in. So this right hand rule is a little weird looking at it in this regard, but with some practice, it's something you don't even have to think about. You just need to drop your pencil, use your right hand, not your left. If you use your left, it'll be backwards, but use your right hand and simply apply it in this curling method with the fingertips and look where your thumb is pointing. The other thing we can do with the right hand rule is use it to designate direction. Um, if I have a disc or some object and it's rotating, I need to be able to designate a direction of that rotation because it's technically rotating like left, but also down, but also right and also up. 
So a much better thing to do here whenever it's rotating, as we see in this picture, is to say that it's counterclockwise, or CCW. That's a positive direction. But if we take our fingers and align them and rotate them so that our fingers are moving counterclockwise, we see that our thumb is pointing out of the page. So we actually also have this idea that going out of the page, that is a counterclockwise motion. Uh, for a clockwise motion, our fingers rotate the other direction, and we can say that this you know, disc, if it's spinning, the direction of that spin is into the page. So it's a little weird kind of looking at it um, and thinking about it, but that's how we designate vectors, uh, especially in the unit of rotation when we start talking about stuff like um, angular velocity, because that's a vector. We start talking about angular acceleration, that's a vector. We start talking about angular momentum, that's a vector. All these vectors are popping up and we need a good way to designate a direction to them. And we use this right hand rule to do it. So that's what we're looking at here uh, with the right hand rule. We'll talk about this a bunch more in class. Um, this was just kind of a crash course, like little reminder if you're trying to do that um, on your own, okay? So with that, right hand rule is quickly finished. Uh, if you ever need more help with the right hand rule, just stop in and see me. It's something that will be confusing for a bit. Um, or find one of the AP2 students. They've been doing this all year. Peace. Da, 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 na, 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 na. Masquerade, is it in another day? Masquerade, it is on the world of laughter. Masquerade, 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 see ya. I'm out. If you need anything, come and see me in homeroom. You know where to find me. 226 guy.